Shalom Kingdom Champion. I take this opportunity to welcome each and every person who is joining us, who is here on site physically, and every single person who is joining us online, and even those people who, who are always here physically and they've traveled. We take this opportunity to welcome you virtually. This is a wonderful day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. And we rejoice mostly this particular weekend because it is a weekend that we have revelation that Jesus Christ died and he rose again on the grave. And we also have a revelation and we have a historical backing that this is an extremely important weekend for us as believers. If you're watching us online and you'd like to give your life to Christ, I encourage you to just put it on the comment section and our team will reach out to you and lead you to Christ. And also please interact with us online on the comment section. Let us know where we are watching us from and we invite each and every person across the globe. Welcome and have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. If you're on your way and you want to reach out to us here and you want to be with us here physically, we are located along the Northern Bypass adjacent to Shell Petrol Station just before you get to Windsor Roundabout. The theme for this month is building the mind of Christ. And we pray and we believe that even this month, as Jesus died and rose, that every single thing that has been disturbing you mentally in any particular way, that the same way that Jesus died and he rose again, that every single thing that has been of hindrance or disturbance to you, that it shall, that it shall die and you will rise up a new person. One more time, welcome to the house of the Lord. Please interact with us on the comment section. Let us know where you're watching us from and be blessed. My name is Patricia Obiero and see you at the feet of Jesus. Church. Praise the Lord, Church. <laughs> Why don't I just request us to stand on our feet? Please say hi to your neighbor. Welcome them to church. Tell them, hey, Enyewe, you really love the Lord. Come on, Mekuja neighbor. Hey, hey. If they have come with this code, just tell them, you are a warrior. Tell them, you are a warrior. You are a warrior. Tell your neighbor. Tell your other neighbor you are a warrior. Hey, hey. Have you welcomed your neighbor to church? Have you told them they look amazing? Have you told them they are a warrior? <laughs> All right, um, if the media team can please help me put up Psalms 47. You can turn to your other neighbor and tell them how big is So I want us to read this together. Are, are we ready? Hey, hey. Are we ready? So I want you to read this with some gusto. Ni gusto ma gusto yo. Just just to read it. All right, let's go. One, two, three, go. Hey, hey. Lakini lakini mume ni danganya. Kuse mokoli mume ni danganya. Let's try it one more time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And shout to God with a voice of hallelujah. All right. Verse 2. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. Uh -huh. Next. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us 
the excellence of Jacob, whom, before we continue, you know there's what you can choose for yourself, but what God chooses for you is far more glorious. Hallelujah. Uh -huh, let's continue. God has gone up with her. Okay, let's try it again. God has gone up with her. The Lord with the sound of her. The Lord with the sound of her. It says, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Let's read together. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. The last verse. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over all the nations. And God sits on His holy throne. Why don't we give it up for Jesus?
How many believe that God is fighting for you? That he that that battle that he's fighting was is already won. It was won on Calvary. Once he was strong on the cross. Do you believe it? Come on, let me see you put your hands together. Come on.
shout, shout it out. Say God is fighting for us. In the name of Jesus, we will shout. of all this is the greatest love story of all if you know like I know and you know that nothing can shake what you know give him a shout of praise come on I know we have our own Valentine's but Jesus said I am the big Valentine you know like what manner of love is this as scripture says that he gave his only begotten son that he should be strong on the cross for you and me. So if I were you, I will take a few minutes and tell him thank you. Come on, lift your voice and tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did and what you continue to do. We know your works. And oh, Father, we are persuaded that you are able to continue doing, to continue keeping us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Thank you for your love, my God. Thank you for your love, my God. Thank you for giving your only son for my sake. For a wreck like me, my God, you died on the cross. Oh, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Come on, child of God, just say thank you. Just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, my God. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, my God. Even as we remember Jehovah, your death and resurrection, my God, our hearts are grateful. We are grateful, my God. We are grateful, my God. We are grateful, my God. Is there someone that is grateful for the love that we were shown on the cross?
Open up your mouth and declare Every knee shall bow Every knee Every knee Every tongue confess Every tongue
You know, I, I would not normally do this, but I feel I, I can see I can see Jackie pushing in the spirit, pushing, pushing in the spirit. And she's pushing for us, but I can feel that some of us are just we, I can't see it. I can't feel it. And 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 this is Resurrection Sunday. Something needs to break loose. Something that has been buried needs to come out. Something that the enemy is covering needs to be opened up. So I don't want you to miss this session of, of worship. I want you to push in the spirit with her. As she's leading us, I want you to push where you are. Because I'm just seeing people standing idle. Whereas God has set an atmosphere for resurrection in this place. Please open your mouth. Don't be idle. Don't be quiet. Open your mouth. Let there be a breakthrough. In this service. In this service. Open your mouth. Come on.
just not a normal Sunday. This is a different Sunday. And I agree with one of the worship team members who say that this is the greatest sacrifice that Christ gave to us. This is the greatest love that he can ever show to us. One musician, one, one, one artist, or one gospel artist sang some years back and said that Nimependwa na fundi wambao jewe. And an indirect translation of that for anyone who doesn't understand English is just for anyone who doesn't understand Swahili is a book. I would indirectly translate it by a book that is written by a man of God and a great author who says that he is more than a carpenter. Physicians have confirmed that he died and he rose again. They have confirmed that truly his hands were pierced. And we have scientists who are giving up on trying to figure out who Jesus is because you cannot put him in a box. He is indescribable. You cannot fix him in a box. And for that reason, he has been able to reveal himself to us in many different aspects. So to some of us, he is the healer. To some of us, he's the provider. To some of us, he is the Alpha and Omega. And every single time, whenever you're faced with a particular challenge, he comes to you as a different person. You cannot describe it. Through discernment, we know that he is more than just a carpenter. And historical backing tells us that his death and his resurrection is a prophecy fulfilled. And for that reason, I just want us to shout the name of Jesus. Because when we call unto his name, every single thing in our life that could be of disturbance unto us, it comes down. And church, could you just help me to shout the name of Jesus? Come on, call that name one more time. Jesus! No other name like unto his name. than every other name the name of Jesus the name of Jesus if you will just help me appreciate the worship team as they take their seats thank you worship team and church you can also appreciate your neighbor and yourself as you take your seats happy Easter tell your other neighbor happy Easter do we have anyone who is joining us for the very first time this Easter, this Sunday? Do we have anyone who is joining us for the very first time? Can we see by a show of hand if there is anyone who is joining us for the very first time? On my left, we have a visitor. On my right as well, we have a visitor. Could you just rise up on your feet? We'd like to appreciate you. We'd like to celebrate you. Kindly just rise up on your feet. Let us get to see you. Those are our visitors this day. Thank you for joining us. Kindly, you can have your seat. And I'd like to welcome each and every person who is here on site physically and every person who is watching us online. Kindly interact with us on the comment section. Let us know where you're watching us from. For our first time visitors towards the tail end of the service, there will be someone holding a placard on my left. And the placard is, is written, Visitors. So kindly, you'll go to the tent that is on my left and we'd like to appreciate you would like to give you something to eat and at the same time so that you may get to know our culture and more about us as the rock ministries i'd also like to appreciate the pmt that is the premarital the care the counseling and the connect department we have a culture of appreciation and today i'd like to appreciate these four departments help me appreciate them Thank you, church. And now you may turn your attention to the on-screen announcements.
what team all of us came together to create something incredible When I have subjective faith that is biased by my experiences, by my personal limitations, it can affect how I view objectivity. So I have to be in a place where my faith is built on something I believe and nothing can persuade me otherwise because I have to start putting truths where truth should be. I don't want to be a, a victim of my subjective thinking that might be tainted more by experience than by my faith. Because objective faith is not dependent on how I feel. Gideon, mighty man of valor, what is God doing? He's pumping faith into Gideon so that he can build the faith of Gideon so that his subjectivity and feelings align more with what God is seeing than what Gideon is seeing. Listen to me, the secret I'm trying to give you tonight is that I don't want us to just get excited, sing new songs. I want us to understand the object is Christ. This self, self-consciousness, self-reliance, self, self-image, self self-whatever, self-poster, Jesus is the answer. As Jesus is raising men in our generation and women in our generation, let them not lose focus that Jesus is that answer. Listen to me, I've seen too many smart people struggling. I've seen too many people with the word struggling, but you know what? It's not about your eloquence. It's not about how much you know. It's about how you've applied him as the object of your faith.
help me appreciate the media team one more time. And again, turn to your neighbor and mention to them what is on your screen and tell them Happy Easter. On my screen, there is Happy Easter. So kindly tell them what's on, my, what's on your screen is not Happy Easter, but on my screen, there is Happy Easter. So turn to your neighbor to the left and to the right and tell them or wish them a happy. And tell them it is wonderful to sit next to you this Sunday. Thank you, church. The marriage... And Enrichment Ministry welcomes all married couples for a movie night on the 3rd May 2024. More details will be announced in subsequent bulletins. We also have wedding bands. Thank you. We make the third and final official wedding announcement between Agnes Mongeli Muemi and Joseph Martin Kiyama Kigo. Are they here with us? They are there. Kindly just rise up on your feet and just wave. Let the church see you. Thank you. There they are. You can have your seats. So their wedding will be held on April 6th, 2024 at Marrow Garden starting at 10 a.m. If anybody has any valid reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, kindly see one of our pastors or forever hold your peace. We also make the third and final announcement, wedding announcement between Winnie Wangari Kagiri and Ian Duita Nganga. Are they here? <laughs> Their wedding will be held on, on April 6th at Thika Road Baptist Church starting at 10 a.m. Again, if anybody has a valid reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, Kindly talk to one of our pastors or forever hold your peace. Last but not least, we make the second official wedding announcement between Nancy Wayua and Dennis Mutuku. Are they here with us today? Oh, one of them is there. Kindly just wave. Let's get to see you. You can have your seats. Their wedding will be held on 13th April 2024 at Ruak Tabernacle right here starting at 10 a.m. If anybody has any valid reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, kindly talk to one of our pastors or forever hold your peace. Men Awake presents a breakfast meeting dubbed Men in Worship on April 6th starting at 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Prayers Beyond Boundaries, that is PBB in City Primary School, Ngara, hosted by one of our very own art warriors, Ed Washori. Men, come, let's have healing and rebirth. Isn't it amazing to have our men gather together and just pray? Is that amazing to have our men gather together and pray, right? We also kindly uh, uh, re request you to remember to have your prayer points on the board. The board is behind Place them at the back of the, the body is placed at the back of the sanctuary. Kindly post your prayers there and our pastors will pray over your prayer requests. 4 a.m. prayer continues from tomorrow, 1st of April. Let us gather together as we commit the month in the hands of God. Last but not least, we have the discipleship class which is scheduled to begin on the 7th of April, 2024. Kindly register at the information desk which is at the back. And now could you kindly rise up on your feet and hold your Bible as we say our statement of belief in preparation for the word of God as the worship team joins me on stage. Let me see your Bible. All right. I am a winner and not a loser. I am a victor and not a victim. I have changed my mind and my attitude to reflect what God says about me. My faith is built on God's word. I can do all that God says I can do. Nothing is impossible from this moment on, for I am a new breed, a new kind, a remnant, and I am after my purpose. You can have your seats. Thank you. Praise God. He is risen. Jesus is risen.
And we're just going to share with you through a song how much he loves us. Tell your neighbor, God loves you. God loves Do not be discouraged. He loves you. Let's go.
for your love I love you Jesus Thank you for your blood Thank you for your blood loves you. Do you love him? Maybe, maybe Pastor Lisa and Dr. Pete will help me here. Do, do you love him? Do you love him? Are you sure? Do you love him? No, no, no. I didn't mean give the mic to sing. <laughs> uh, There's a song that says, I love the Lord and I won't take it back. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. He has done so good to me. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. You love the Lord. That's the wonderful name of Jesus.
about Jesus, all is done for me. When I think about Jesus, I set me free. I can. You are coming now. I will not take your time. There is a story about a man. Hear me. True story about a man. Everywhere you meet him, when you talk to him, you say, Hi, brother. He said, Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, it's because we have not appropriated what Jesus has done for us. That is why you can still come to church and look dull. That's why you think house rent is enough to make you dull. If you think about how precious the blood is, the fact that he died to take away your sin, you will scream like me. Fear is gone. All fear is gone. Yeah, because I know He holds my future, and the life is what I live just because He for the word now, I have I have very important announcement but I think Dr. Pete you need to come I don't want to I don't want I feel like I don't want to dilute the atmosphere are you ready for the word <laughs> if the reality of what Jesus has done for us enter into you let me tell you, you, nothing bothers you apart from your salvation. Nothing. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. The only thing that bothers is, is my relationship with God. Not whether I have money or not. Is somebody hearing me? We need to be grateful for what he's done. 
Father, we thank you. Thank you for going to the cross for us. Thank you for taking away internal damnation and putting your soul life in us. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Celebrate the Lord one minute. I'm not going to sing. I'm so tempted to sing, but I'm not going to sing. I want you to play. I want you to play. Just play. I want you to play. All my life you have been faithful. Just be playing. Play it. Where is the trumpeter? Where are they? From I love you, Lord. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? I will come at the end of the service. It's very important. What I want to tell you three very important announcements. But please help me welcome Reverend's friend. I, I, told, I told the first service the first time I heard him teach the word, when I sat under that service, I told Reverend, please let him come back again. Uh, not because I know. I don't know. I don't know. But at least when somebody is dishing the word, you know. And he was such a blessing. This morning he blessed us in the first service. And I want you, the second service, your heart to be open. Because a word is coming your way. He's here with his wife, Christine Odera. Please help me welcome Dr. Pete Odera to give us the word. Come on. Celebrate the Lord as he comes. Where are you going? Where are you going? With every breath that I am able, what will I do? I will see. What will I do? been good to you has he been good to you he's a good God he's a good God and even when we have been faithless and unfaithful he still remains faithful because he cannot deny himself what a good God high five your neighbor for me take a seat and say thank you Jesus for the resurrection Hallelujah. You guys blessed my heart so much. You blessed my heart so much. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. 
just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Yeah, should I love you? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you, Lord. More than anything, more than anything, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Listen, I just want to tell you. Put your hands together, give him a loud acclamation. More than anything. Because when I was unworthy, he allowed them to stretch him wide and he hung his head and died. Just for me. Just for me. That's what I want to point out to you today, if I can get to it. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, more than anything, we need to get to the word. time Jesus came Jesus came and did it just for me very last time Jesus Jesus came and did it just for me hallelujah he did it for me let's go to the book of numbers we're trying to get somewhere hopefully I'll get through this 
Greetings from Reverend Julian. He's in Botswana today. I told the first service that um, I, was, I was praying. I was saying, Lord, I, I, need, I need an opportunity to bring this word to somebody. Can you open a door? That afternoon, he got in touch with me and said, you're the one who's happening on Sunday. So I, I love my brother, Reverend Julian. Uh, resurrection Weekend greetings. Look at your neighbor and say, Happy Resurrection Weekend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I love Jesus. Um, hmm. Numbers. <laughs> Numbers chapter 14. Eugene. Numbers chapter 14. Hey. You know, when we're at our West, I tell them not to play because if they play, this is the kind of stuff that now starts to happen and we don't get to the word. So, Eugene, please, I, I beg, I beg, thank you, Jesus. Not because you're, do, you're doing the right thing, like not yet. Just give me a minute, give me a minute, give me a minute. The Bible tells us that a minstrel came and the prophet prophesied. He asked for a minstrel. So, you guys are very dangerous. You're very, I, was telling, I was telling Pastor Zeno, I'm trying to worship, but the bass guitar was confusing me <laughs> very hard. I was, it was just all over the place, and uh, God bless you. God bless you, son. Where did he disappear to? Was he raptured? <laughs> so I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> um, usually, every Sunday, I host a radio show. It's called Good Morning Africa on G.O.D. Radio 1. Gospel On Demand, Radio 1. It's an online platform, but you can download the app. If you go to the App Store and just look for G-O-D Radio 1, you'll find the app. We broadcast out of San Diego, California uh, once a week. And Good Morning Africa is really an opportunity to allow um, 60, 70% of my audience is in the U.S. The rest is in uh, wherever, um, all over the world. But I give them an opportunity to share in what it is we experience every single day. This is what we're like every Sunday. So I, I share some music, and I really want to encourage you. Um, we, we have the, the show usually starts at 9. It's an hour long, but we have a repeat at 3. So this afternoon, when you go home, you can take me with you and just listen um, online, and uh, God will bless you. Um, I know I didn't... This is not... The, I have some books there at the back. You can find Nicole. The books are a thousand shillings only about transformation, but I really do want to get to the word. Um, Nicole is back there. And if you see a pretty girl standing next to some red books, that's her. That's her. I didn't want to say other things, otherwise I'd get in trouble. Numbers chapter 14, verse 20. Um, and the Bible says, and the Lord said, um, this is, I just need to bring us up to speed in what's happening. The children of Israel have come, <clears throat> excuse me, children of Israel came into a place called Kadesh Barnea. Everybody say Kadesh. If you read the story, they've wandered in the desert and they come to a place where I call it an aperture, a portal of destiny. And when they get there, the Bible says in chapter 13 that they got there and, um, the Lord commanded that they send spies, and the spies went in and came back. When they came back, ten of them said one thing, two of them said the other thing. I said to the earlier service, it is possible to look at exactly the same thing and come up with two completely different conclusions. It is very possible to look at the same thing, but because of the posture of your heart, you see something completely different. You can look at this country and say, what a mess. Or you can look at this country and say... I'm going to be blessed. The decision is in the posture of your heart. It's in the posture of your heart. I go as far as to say um, other things, but allow me to proceed with the reading. And when they came to that place, they said, we look like grasshoppers. If you look at the very last verse of chapter 13, they, they, they declared that the sons of Enoch, the uh, Anakim are there, and we look like grasshoppers in their eyes which also tells you a little bit about the posture of your heart. How you see yourself is how others will begin to see you. Hallelujah. 
Uh, I haven't even started my tell your neighbors yet, but I will get there eventually. I want you to put your hand on your chest and tell yourself, I see myself as a champion. Now, that didn't sound very champion-like to me. I don't know about you, but me, as far as champions are concerned, when champions win, when champions are whatever, champions, champions are a little loud, louder than that, unless you're an Arsenal supporter. Champions are a little loud. Oh, there you have Arsenal people here? Uh, then why didn't you shout a little louder? Uh -huh, you're waiting for another opportunity. Please remember that when the trumpet sounds, it will not sound twice. Hallelujah. Put your hand on your chest and say, I'm a champion. I'm a champion. Now, that's much better. That sounds very champion-like. And, and by the way, at our West, we miss you, our cousins. We really do. Uh, because you're louder than us, usually. So that I expect this, this kind of noise from here. And the Lord bless you. The first service was a little uh, quieter. And, and so they refused to go into the place that the Lord had commanded them. And, and, and when they refused to go and they decided that they wanted to choose somebody else to lead them back all the way to Egypt, uh, Moses and Aaron, the Bible says, fell on their faces. And the Lord said, get out of my way. I'm going to finish these people. Get out of my way. That's why you need a good pastor who doesn't get upset when you upset him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the pastor said to the Lord, he said, Lord, listen, I want to implore you that you do not destroy these foolish people. They are foolish, but don't destroy them because your name will be at stake. And he pleaded on behalf of the people of Israel. And this was God's response. Verse 20. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to whose word? Your pastor's word matters. Don't make your pastor mad. If you make your pastors mad, and I say pastors, because some of you, you know, you choose. You like to choose. Oh, I'm, it's too early. It's too early in the summer. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. Thy word, verse 21. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Somebody say the glory. We're after the glory. Psalm 72, verse 18 and 19. Psalm 72, verse 18 and 19. So promise me you'll be good to your pastors. Hallelujah. I will look for the report. Promise me. Promise me. Because if he prays with Shingo Pande, it might not be good for you. The Bible is clear on that in the book of Hebrews chapter 13. He says, if they pray for, let them pray for you. Let them, when they think about you, they say, Father, I remember that sister. Ah, hallelujah. Bless them. I remember that brother. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, brother John is such a blessing. Sister Jane, ooh, hallelujah. God bless them even more. Let them remember you like that. Let them not say, ah, Father, this one again, this one. Oh, this one again. Are you in Psalm 72? Verse 18. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. Look at your neighbor and say, he does wondrous things. He does wondrous things. He's marvelous. And blessed be his glorious name forever. Watch this. Let's read together. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Let the whole earth be filled with what? I'm going somewhere. It's going to take a while. It starts like a slow car. You know the one they're pushing. It takes time. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Let's look at verse 16. It's the last um, bit of the scriptures. I'm, I'm showing you something here that I feel is important for us to read on this Easter weekend. Second Corinthians 4, 16. For which cause we faint not. Let's read another version for, for a change. Is there a new King James? New King James because... Thou, thee, thou fainteth not is, may not be a blessing. Okay, here we go. Verse 16, let's read it together. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Hold it, let's read that again. One, two, go. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Hold it, go back, let's read it again. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Verse 17. For our light affliction, somebody say what? Light affliction. 
what, is the, what did he call it? Light affliction. Keep going. Which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Tell yourself if you have a neighbor that agrees with you, tell yourself if they don't agree. If you have a breath mint, take it real quick and then look at them and say, hey, listen, what's happening to you is for your glory. I came to encourage somebody. You know, in the first service, uh, in the first, I don't mean to tell anyone's business. Somebody came to me after and I was praying with them and they're the reason I came. I came to encourage you today. I, I, I know that you're used to some loud preaching and what have you and Arsenal winning and flag waving and what have you, uh, but I'll get there. I started to prepare. I was telling Pastor Zeno, I started to prepare for this sermon about a year ago, so please forgive me if I'm a little slow. Um, I'm, I'm just a little slow. I didn't have coffee this morning. I was walking and, and praying and saying, I, I hope somebody invites me. And like I said, your uh, senior overseer um, invited me, so I'm here. If you grew up a Roman Catholic, let me see, how many of you grew up Roman Catholic? You grew up in the Roman Catholic. Catholic? Mkwapi. Catholic? Let me see, Wib. Proud Catholics, you're there? Okay, wonderful. I went to a Catholic school for four years. Uh, Lutheran, where were you? Lutheran, Lutheran. No Lutherans at all. No Lutherans. Okay. Anglican, you grew up Anglican. I know my wife grew up Anglican. Anglican, Mukoengi. Hallelujah. Why are you here? Should be in the moment. If you grew up in any of those churches, you are familiar with the 14 stations of the cross. You remember the stations of the cross. I, at least I have one person in the front row who agrees with me. They remember, and it brings precious memories. Hallelujah. Uh, the Via Dolorosa. You remember Via Dolorosa? Down the Via Dolorosa. There's a pathway. What I'm trying to say is I want us to go. I'm developing a different kind of stations of the cross today, which if you stay with me, there are five stations that will be a blessing to you. While I was, you know, sort of preparing myself for today, the Holy Spirit began to whisper something to me, and this is really everything that I want to help you with today. Greatness is born through the hardships and the storms of life. If you forget anything I see, and if you never shout about anything else that I say today, because there'll be a moment for you to shout in about 25 minutes. There's a moment for you to shout. But right now, I want you to understand something. Greatness is born through the hardships and the storms of life. If you're going through a storm currently, then I want to assure you that there's a reason behind it. The storm is bringing out greatness in you. Now, if you're not going through a storm, I want to help you to understand that you may be coming out of one or heading into one very soon. I just want to help you understand because God is going to use those storms to help you become a better person. I know many of us get into these relationships and there's this thing going on uh, online. People talk about, I got into a relationship with somebody from, <laughs> and I won't say which tribe, and, and I was character developed. I received what? Character development. Now, let me help you in Jesus' name. Character development is God's purpose for you. Oh, you don't know that? Because the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. This is the fruit of the Spirit. It does not come naturally. And so therefore, in order to maintain, I didn't say this in the first service, in order to bring out patience in you, God gives you a nasty boss. Who gives you what? Character development. Hallelujah. 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 I know that one will sit with you for a minute because I know you don't agree with it. You don't agree with it, but it's the truth. Hallelujah. So just take your medicine like a good, good girl, like a good boy. Take your medicine. And like Mary Poppins, do a spoonful of sugar. I'll give you some sugar. 
We're all looking for glory. I established this in the other service. I said all of us are looking for some form of glory, either the glory of men or the glory of God. The glory of men is your PhD, your master's degree, whatever it is. You're all looking for glory. If you're not looking for glory, then you wouldn't have taken the time that you took to prepare to look the way you look this morning, afternoon, the way you look right now. And if your neighbor was not complimented at all, this is your opportunity. If you're not married and the person next to you or behind you is the person that you are aiming at hearing God about, this is your opportunity. Tell them you prepared well. Hallelujah. Tell them you prepared well. Tell them you prepared well. You prepared, you prepared well. You prepared well. Just tell them you look glorious. If they don't, just say, "Mm mm-hmm. Because we don't want to lie in church. Tell them you look glorious in the spirit. (laughs) And if somebody told you you look glorious in the spirit, then just know that the outward man... (laughs) Ah! There's the glory of men, and then there's the glory of God. Anything glorious, we're going to talk about that in procession. I know we've been talking about another topic about the mind, developing the mind of Christ. And uh, I, I shared at, um, at West, at our West, uh, I think it is last month, about the mind. So you can look that up. Uh, the thing that the Lord has me um, really speaking about is this thing about the glory. Anything glorious has a pathway to it. Anything glorious has a pathway to it. No, this is just the reality. Anything glorious. If your wife is looking glorious today, it's because there was a pathway. And some of you were late because the pathway took a little longer for the glory. Hallelujah. For the glory to emerge. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. We appreciate the way you look today, don't we? We appreciate, gentlemen, do you appreciate how your wife looks today? And if you don't, please don't lie. Just say the inward man is where the glory is. And I cannot take responsibility for whatever happens hereafter. And I talked about there's a pathway to to that glory, whether it is in righteousness or in, in sin. Um, there was a, I mean, there's gang leaders in, uh, I remember I was in, uh, I was in California um, in a section of Los Angeles, which 15, 20 years ago, if you walked and you wore the wrong colors, if you wore red in the blue section and blue in the red section, they killed you automatically. They killed you automatically. And there was some serious, there's a guy right now, they call him, I think, Hurricane somebody uh, in, in Haiti. And they, he's the guy, it take, there's a path to get to where you are. There's a qualification. It takes work. Whether you are working towards something to be uh, glorious in sin or glorious in righteousness, there's a pathway. There's a pathway. There's a pathway. Hallelujah. So if you want to become a leader of God's people, there's a pathway. And that pathway begins here. And we're going to begin with, uh, all of them begin with G. We're going to begin in the garden. At the time of Jesus' crucifixion. They left the supper, the Bible explains to us. They left the supper. And once supper was ended, Judas has stood up and ran off to get his M-Pesa. He was waiting for the M-Pesa signal and putting on lip gloss to come to the uh, garden so that he could betray Jesus with a kiss. You do know that I spent a little time online with, you know, that's, those are the memes that have been going around. People are sending this to me. It's hilarious. Hilarious. But I want to encourage us uh, that Jesus left the garden, left the upper room where they'd been eating, so you don't eat all the time. You go to the garden. He went to the garden of Gethsemane. Now I need you to do a little better than the first service did. Look at your neighbor. No, actually, don't look at your neighbor. Say to yourself, I need a garden. I need, everybody needs a garden. Everybody needs a place and something. You guys call it an altar. You call it a whatever, whatever it is. You need a place that you go to. That place that you go to, it could be downstairs. It could be upstairs. It could be on the roof. It could be outside, wherever it is. You need a garden, a place where you go to talk to God, a place where you go to interface with the Almighty, a place that you go to receive the downloads that God gives you, the place that I went to hear from God when 
I was preparing for today. You need a garden. Jesus had a garden, a place that he went and he began to go into that place and he began to pray. It's the place where we go to pray and not just talk to God, the place where God talks to you. That's the place that you need. Everybody needs one of those. And I want to remember the times when I was younger, when I wasn't as, as, uh, as, uh, as clever, as well-known as I am today, as, as advanced as I am. In those days when I was so silly, so stupid, so I didn't know anything, all I knew was that I have to get God. And I began to pray. And listen, I would get up to pray at 5 in the morning. I'd pray for a couple of hours, then I would have breakfast. And then the rest of the team who are in ministry with us would then come at 8. And then we would pray again. We would pray again from 8 until we finished. Somebody say, until we finished. Not until the clock ended, until we finished. I don't know about you, but we need to get back to that time where we will pray until we finish. We will pray and we're not looking at the clock. Say, hey, yes, hey, oh, Shendai, hey, yeah, hey, hey. yeah. It's only been five minutes. Sandai, Sandai, Shandai, Shandai, Shandai. 11 minutes, oh my goodness. We need to reach a place where we're in that garden and the sweetness of the fellowship with the one who our soul loves becomes so great that time floats away. I don't know if you remember when you fell in love with someone and you spent time with them and you looked at the clock and it was three hours later and you were supposed to be at home two hours ago. But here you are looking into this person's eyes and saying, oh God, I wish. Hallelujah. Oh, can I talk? Can I talk? Can we come to that place when we are in fellowship with him, in a place where we are so in love with Jesus that time just flies by, that we don't notice when night becomes day or when day becomes night? Can we come to that place again? Or are we those kind of people? I would hate it if the lover of my soul, if I had a girlfriend, when I used to have a girlfriend, now she's my wife, but all she would say is, honey, hi, all I need is a new pair of shoes, honey, hi. Hi, all I need is a new this. Honey, hi, when are we going out for dinner? Not interested in anything that I'm interested in. All we do is we're asking, Father, I need. Lord, I should have. Father, my sister is dying with, I don't know, jealousy. Please, I need to overcome her with my shoes. In the mighty name of Jesus, I need a mighty, mighty pair of shoes that will outshoe everybody else in the mighty name. Where are we when we say, God, I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. Take me to the place where you are. This is the problem. The reason I was listening to our band members and we weren't really playing those old songs the way they really were supposed to be played. Because there was a sweetness back then that we said, oh God, I just want to be in your presence. We didn't have elaborate lights. There was no stage. In fact, the keyboard was borrowed. And Altaf Dadani, I don't know if you guys, you don't know Altaf Dadani. Uh, yeah. Altaf Dadani was, if something happens to the keyboard, you're going to have to pay for it. Prayed until we finish. Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray, Jesus said, lest you fall into temptation. The remedy for temptation was what? Was watching and prayer. Staying in the posture of prayer. In the garden, there's three things you lose. The first thing you will lose is sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you about something. I'm not talking about the questions that the church has appointed. I'm not talking about the all-night prayer that Reverend Julian is asking for to move, move mountains which need to be moved. I'm talking about that time that you say, God, I just want to spend time with you. And so you spend time, you say, you know, everything now becomes boring. Everything becomes boring. I don't know about you, but stuff became boring. Boring to me. It doesn't matter what they bring on Netflix. I can't watch it anymore. It doesn't matter what they bring and I scroll and I scroll. I say, it's enough. God, I need my time with you. You lose sleep voluntarily or involuntarily because when he begins to woo you, when he begins to call you, when he begins to draw you, something begins to happen and sleep will, will, will disappear. Sleep will disappear. And then we start to have fellowship with him. Fellowship with him. Second thing you lose is friends. Ladies and gentlemen, you will lose friends. The garden is lonely. Can I talk? The garden is lonely. There's a place that you get to in God where your friends can't come. 
Okay, I think the first service heard that one better than this one. There's a place that you get to in God where your friends can come. I'm not saying that your friends are bad people. I'm not saying that your friends are wicked. I'm simply saying that there's a place where God now begins to call you and he calls you alone. The scriptures say, Abraham, consider Abraham your father. When God called him, he called him alone. He called him alone. He begins to separate you from the crowd, begins to draw you into a place where it says, it's just you that I want because there's some things that only you need to see. There's a place that you get to in God that he begins to separate you and your friends can come with you. I love my friends. I said in the earlier service, I, 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 I made some good friends. I played rugby for my high school, the Kakamega High School. Hallelujah. I played, rug I played rugby for my school. Then I played rugby. Yes, I did. Believe it or not. <laughs> try me. Try me. Try me. Try me. In fact, don't try me because... I don't know if you've seen that meme where there's an, uh, an impala drinking water. Then the lion comes. And then the impala just does this and the lion goes this way. That was me. And I was the impala, not the lion. I played for the Kenya Harlequins and we won that. I did. God bless Kenya Harlequins. Hallelujah. But there came a point because the call started coming to my life. And when the call started coming, rugby fell off. Listen, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Please don't misunderstand me. The only reason that I did not play for Kenya is because I did not keep playing rugby. I was pulled away from those things. Listen, my friends didn't understand what was going on. The people in my estate started calling me names. And I said, there's a place that you come to in God. Where, where I, my fellowship and my, the course of my purpose and the call is far too precious for me to spend time with people who don't understand where it is that I'm going. There's nothing like a destiny moment to test friendships. There's nothing, listen, there's nothing. Destiny call, let me tell you. You, you will hold hands with somebody. I'll never let you go, I'll never let you go until the moment of destiny. And destiny is a defining moment. And I can tell you if they don't understand your call, they will not cross that threshold. They will not cross that threshold. They will not make it. Listen, girlfriend, let me help you. Let me help you. It's not, you know, he comes to church, meets you at the front there, carries your Bible, you sit down. But let, let destiny just come. Let, let destiny come, because that's the determinant with whether you go into covenant or not. Hallelujah. You lose friends. You lose friends. Some of you don't want that, but I'm going to tell you what you're going to lose. Yeah, in fact, let me not even wait for the time. Let me just tell you in advance what I was going to say. You're going to lose him. There was an old, listen, there was an old, there was an old song. What was that? Like? Tevin Campbell's song, Goodbye. Just start singing that song now. Just start saying goodbye. Because by the end of the service, there's some things you're going to have to say goodbye to. Because glory is calling. This is still in the garden. And in the garden, the other thing you lose is your will. Somebody say, My will. One of the hardest things I think for many of us, and I say, listen, I have nothing against women. I'm married to one and I have two beautiful daughters. I have nothing, but women have a problem with strong-willedness. Let me put it like this. Okay, I'm coming to you because this is the thing with you Kenyans. Kenyan women have very nikichwangumu san. It's the truth. Because you don't want to be told because you're educated, you're sophisticated, you don't want to be told. Listen, because I'm not your pastor, I'm not going to be here next week. So let me just say. Let me just say and then I'll go away. Because I have a thing for the guys, but I just want to help you. I want to help you with something, ladies. Your will. Part of the reason we don't submit to our husbands is because of your will. And it's not about your husband. It's about really submitting... Upendi kuambiwa. Don't be fooled. She's cute. She looks nice. She's, oh, she just doesn't like being told. I knew that I'd get a loud amen from this place. <laughs> Ladies, I feel you. I feel you because even me, I don't like being told. 
There's some things that I don't like. My wife will tell you there's some things I don't like. So now when I'm leaving the house, I'm ready to go. When somebody comes at the last minute and says, uh, Dad or oh honey, please go and get me. Nilkwa ni mejipanga. And then the addition. Even Barack Obama didn't like it. I promise you. He come, he's on his way. We've given this great speech. He calls Michelle and says, Michelle, you can't imagine the thing. You can't imagine what I told the people today. And she says, please remember to bring milk. Do you, do you not know why I'm going to be the president of the... I'm talking about your will. Because here's the thing that God is going to do. If you think that your husband or your boyfriend, your parents are difficult, this is what God is, God is going to bring you to a place where he will force you to bend your will. I know you didn't like that, but I need to say it. Thank you, madam. Thank you. God bless you so much. Because your will is fighting God. Stop fighting God. Listen, I know it looks like your husband or your boss or your, whoever is in authority or so over your life. But you're fighting God. Oh, you need me to testify with my own story. So did I tell you that time that I had a problem with security guards? So my wife is my witness. I had a problem with security guards. But the problem wasn't security guards. I had a problem with authority. I didn't like being told. Especially by people who I didn't think had the authority to tell me what it was they were telling me. So every time I'd come to a place, I didn't have to say anything. My wife is here. She's my, I didn't have to say anything. I would get, people would pass nicely. One, two, three, then comes me. And then the, it's like the security guard had, it's, I would say it's a demon, but it was God. Because the Holy Spirit would enter them and they would put on a face. And then they would say something like this. Kijana unaenda wapi? Mimi ni kijana. Look at me. And then they'd do something silly which I didn't like. They would ask me for my ID. Andika kwa kitabu. The thing I did not like doing was writing in that book. And so if if I finally, I'd, I'd write Shingo Pande. Until one day, I was going to see a friend of mine. He said, I'm at home, come. So let me tell you the medicine. This was the medicine. The Lord sent someone for me. He said, please come, I'm at home. So I went to see them. So when I got to the gate, I got to the gate, I expected the treatment that, see, the gate would be open because it's me. So I came, I drove, drove, they, beep, beep. The watchman peeped. <laughs> this is what he did. He opened the gate, shut it, and came. And you know how they come to the other side. Uh -huh. <laughs> then I said, I've come to see so and so. And he says, This is what he said to me, Belinda. He said, and I'm not lying, he said, Hayuko. He knew he was lying. I knew he was lying. We all knew he was lying. <laughs> but he still went ahead and said, Hayuko. And he knew that I knew he was lying. So I said, Lakini, he said, Apana, Apana, Amesema Hayuko, or whatever he said. So he went back in. So I, I backed up into the street. I went a little bit ahead. I called the guy on the phone. And I said, listen, your guy has said that you're not there. He said, okay, don't worry, just come. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell him to open. A revelation hit me. That the problem you have, Pete, is with authority. His authority had told him, don't open for anybody. Here I was trying to get him to violate the authority. From that day, I began to understand that my problem wasn't with watchmen. My problem was authority. And authority initially comes from God. And God was trying to show me something. If you can't obey a watchman who you can see with your eyes, what do you mean to say you are under God's authority? I should put the mic down. The reason we submit is not because the person we submit to is qualified. We don't submit because the person is qualified. We submit because we understand authority. 
And I'm spending too much time on this because we're still in the garden. And that's when Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will. Nevertheless, to the watchman. These days, if they say, Park, he calls me Kijana, even though I'm turning 55 this year, he tells me, Kijana, Park Apo. That is exactly what I will do. Because I understand authority. And that ukijinyenye keza, underneath that authority, the Bible is very clear. Humble yourself under God's, let me paraphrase, authority and he will lift you up. Your lifting isn't coming because you are all together lovely. Or you did your thing and you spoke eloquent English of nose. In the garden, we lose our will. And it is important. This is the thing that makes the gospel sometimes unattractive to men. Because it, you may, it makes you look weak. I would rather look weak before the Lord. Because in time, he will lift me up. From Gethsemane, they arrested him and took him before the governor, the second G. And the question that I asked the previous service is this. How are you when people accuse you? Just think about it for a couple of seconds. How are you when people accuse you? So maybe you're nice, like my wife and people never excuse you. She's nice, she's always, people like her, people love her. By the way, really love her, you know. <laughs> well, how are you when people accuse you? Because me, on the other hand, I'm just using myself to preach today. Me, on the other hand, let me tell you, Maina. <laughs> I hope Maina is here. Atirere Maina. Iwa igwa. Accusations, I, let me tell you, the, can I tell you one of the most hilarious accusations that was brought in my life? They accused me of being a devil worshiper. Me, devil worshiper. They accused me. They accused me so much that churches now said, by the way, if these guys come to your school, don't let them sing there. There are people in this room who are witnesses of this thing that I'm telling you. They called me a devil worshiper. How do you behave when they accuse you? How do you behave when they accuse you? That's a test. It's a test. It's a test because you're going somewhere. Jesus was accused. And the Bible says he said nothing. He said, I never said a mumbling word. He, in fact, when they asked him, they said, do you not know that I have authority to do ABC? And he told him, you would have no authority if it were not given to you. This is what he said to Pilate. You must remember this. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this. Hallelujah. John 18, 36. He said, my kingdom, John 18, 36. My kingdom is not of this world. He said, if it were, my subjects would fight for me. In other words, ain't nobody fighting for me. So please understand this. I have an army that's invisible. Let me prove it to you. The devil is constantly accusing you. And he wants you to trip by your words. He wants you to trip by your words. So he's constantly bringing accusations against you. And those accusations in the spirit realm materialize and become actual words through people. I've seen it before. One day somebody accused me of something that I was not guilty of. I said, you know, I'm not one to defend myself, but that is not my fault. <laughs> That's not me. Aki, it was not me. And then I realized something that he's constantly, the enemy is constantly accusing you. Constantly, constantly. And this is what he wants you to do. But here's the problem. Is that Jesus wants you to display the character of Christ. The character of Christ was like this. Shh. We said this in the last service. We said, what is, when they bring accusations against you, what did he do? Jesus was quiet. This is impossible for us to... Ah, Dr. Pete, you can't imagine. Listen, listen, listen. Let me help you with something. Let me help you with something. Jesus, who is the king of all kings, was accused of things. Some of those things were false. They were false. And the Bible declares to us, he didn't say... That. In fact, uh, I think it was Belinda who was shouting in the last service who said, like a lamb, he was dumb as a lamb. Going to a sheep, going to the slaughter. Just going. Just going. Hey, it's really quiet in this Anglican church this afternoon. <laughs> Listen, Jesus faced three governing officials. He faced, he faced the high priest. 
Caiaphas. He faced Pilate, who was the governor, and he faced Herod Antipas, who was the king of the area. Let me understand something. He faced all of these, and none of them found him guilty of anything. None. None. None of those counsels. So in the place of the governor, this is what it is. When accusations are brought, your innocence is proven because, number one, you have lived a blameless life. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, where are we in that time of living a blameless life when our bishops and some of our pastors are facing accusations, some of which are true, in fact, many of which are true, and then they say, touch not the anointed. Where are those people? I'm looking for the ones who are going to live a life that is blameless. God is looking for the kind of people who will say, accuse that person of anything and you won't find a shred of evidence. Except in this one matter, like they did with Daniel. Concerning his God, that is where you will find fault with him. And then they manufactured a law that became illegal for him to pray. And he said, I'm going to break the law because this is what I usually do. This is what God demands of me. There's a place, a priesthood that demands that you're going to meet God where he is. Meet God where he is. Begin to say, it, it doesn't matter what they say. My innocence is before the Lord. I am doing something in, in a space where I'm living a life that is blameless. The second thing I'm talking about here is before those accusations, you learn not to defend yourself. One of the things that I think we have a problem with is defending ourselves. And some of us, like me, are very gifted with English. You have verbiage. You have vocabulary. You have words. Which of you are, mm, and God sometimes just wants you to mm, look at your neighbor and call him or her zippy. <laughs> Let me tell you why quietness is important. This is another thing that I learned. Let me tell you why quietness is important. Quietness is an act of faith and implicit trusting in God to defend you. The reason we argue with people is because we don't trust God to defend us. The next time you're arguing, ask yourself this question. Is God, do I have faith that God will defend me in this situation? That is the day you will start to keep quiet. So monitor, monitor, monitor your language. Monitor your language. Trusting the Lord to implicitly. Trusting him implicitly to defend you. Silence is faith. Silence is trusting God. That's faith in God. Your neighbor's not shouting, so just nudge them and tell them, I know he was talking to you. Something happened to Jesus in his moment of quietness. This is the thing that I wonder. Now, you know, I can be quiet if people accuse me. I can be quiet knowing that Jesus, that God will defend me. But now, they swapped him for Barabbas. Let me say, say they swapped Barabbas for him. Pilate says, let me release him to you. Who do you want? I release him to you because I have permission to do it. Let me release him. And then you, you know, instead, they said, no, no, no. Give us Barabbas, the insurrectionist. Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Now, I don't have time because that's an entire sermon on its own. I don't have time to get into it. But let me ask it this way. Are you able to be content when somebody else who you know did not deserve the promotion, did not deserve the position, took the position that was coming to you. Can you be content? Listen, let me help you with this one. Say, Dr. Pete can be content and be quiet and not defend himself. I can do that. I think I can do that. I can do that. I can, I can even trust God to defend me in a case where I know that I was doing okay. But I, I, I say, Nani, wait, 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 wait. That was my promotion. Excuse me, that was my position. I was the one, I was telling the, the worship team earlier, I was telling, I've forgotten what you guys call yourself. Please, don't, don't. Uh -huh, our worship. I was telling our worship earlier. You know that you know that you were the one who was supposed to. Everybody expected that you were the one to sing that solo today. Please notice I'm turning my back on them again. And, 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 and you were the one who was supposed to sing that because you knew how to really do it. And then that day, that's the day that Pastor Zeno comes and says, I, I want you to sing that. Even that song, Haina Upako. As far as you're concerned. Pastor Zeno that day says, no, uh, Sister so-and-so, you're the one to sing, and you guys must sing this song. We had practiced. 
Can you tell I'd been in a worship team before? <laughs> Can you tell? Are you, are you, because listen, the sister was coming to that song. Her voice isn't all that. Excuse me. Her voice isn't all that. And anyway, she doesn't know all the words anyway. And then she's the one who's called to sing anyway. You know how they do their hand. Am I content with somebody else being fronted? Because I will tell you something. Barab, there's always opportunity. People will always choose a Barabbas in your life. If they've never done it, they're going to do it. If they've never done it already, they're going to do it. They're going to choose a Barabbas in your life. Somebody who you do not, in fact, not that you do not think they are not worthy of that position. And everybody can see. I've seen it in my life. I've seen, I've seen people. How do you behave when somebody else takes your position? Are you content? Can you be content? That's what happens in the governor's palace. Can you be content? From the governor's palace, they went to Golgotha. Golgotha is also known as the place of the skull. And quite simply, that's the place you go to die. That's the place you go to die. That's where your ego, gentlemen, your ego, gentlemen, your ego, gentlemen. Sorry, the record is stuck. Ego, gentlemen, ego, gentlemen, ego. You people were shouting very loudly when I was talking to the sisters. Gentlemen, your ego, gentlemen, your ego. That's where your ego dies. Where if your wife says, honey, could you wash the dishes for me? Me, me. Me. A man. Me. He says, yes, you're so strong, you're wonderful, and the house help is away. So today, please wash the dishes for me. I'm busy with. There's your ego. Hey, I've really come for you in this service. <laughs> your pride. All those things die. And let me help you understand why this happens. If you don't die, Christ cannot live in you. If you don't die, Christ cannot live in you. It's as simple as that. What does the Bible say? I believe it's Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Is it 220? Pastor Liz, please help me with it. It's 220 that says, I have been what? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. We used to memorize these verses. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in him who loved me and gave his life for me. I have been crucified. Which means, crucified doesn't mean, nimedandia kwa cross. No. It means, atirere. What does it mean? Nimesulubiwa. I have been crucified, nailed to the cross, hands and knees with a crown on my head. I am dead. I am dead. Jesus said it like this, unless a seed falls to the ground, John 12, 24, it remaineth alone. But if it falls to the ground and it will bring forth much fruit. How much fruit? Much fruit. The reason we're not being fruitful, ladies and gentlemen, is because we're not dead. We're still alive. We're still alive. Listen, I'm not saying that we go to the northern bypass and wait for, uh, what is that thing, Nyaugenya? That's <laughs> what somebody said, to be going full speed to pass with you. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying dead men feel no pain. We don't, dead men don't feel pain. Dead men can't talk. The reason you're talking is because you're still alive. You're not crucified with Christ. Listen, by the way, the old man dies hard. Let me tell you, Pete, Pete this, you're looking at Pete 5.0, I think it's now 5.0. Hey, this one, we've killed him many times. I don't know if you went, you used to watch wrestling. He comes like you bring, yeah, yeah, and then you go and do it, and then he gets up again, you, you yeah, nail him to the cross, kill that man. And God expects you to do it by yourself. You know, there you are praying, Father, kill me. Hey, no. <laughs> Don't pray that prayer. Paul says it like this. Put to death all the things. Put to death. So that's our goal. So there we are, and we're going to the cross so that we can nail ourselves there. Dead men can't be jealous. Why are you jealous? It's because, listen, some of these things are in, invisible. Pride is invisible. Jealousy is invisible. 
You can't see it. Oh, but you can very well sense it. It feels like a potato in your throat. Dead men can't be driven by lust or greed. I think I've come out. Sorry. Hey. Hey. Dead men can't be driven. So then we must put to death the lustful man. We must put to death the greedy woman who says that the man has to have, has to have, has to have before he shows up. Our women are greedy, man. I really wanted to preach a nice sermon. Aki, I did. I did. I did. Ah! Hey, no, you, you're late, you're late. you came to the right place. You came to the right place. No, I'm not letting you off the hook. I just want you to breathe a little bit. Tell your neighbor if you're a lady, Aki, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Listen, and that's important. We need to die. I'm dying. There's some things, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters over here at the worship team, I am dying. There's some things that God has forced me to nail to the cross, and in that way, I'm dying. So there is so and so. Oh, I died. Let me tell you. You can actually die, which brings you to the grave. So when a body, when somebody dies, I'm not, I don't want, is, I don't, I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to, listen, the death process sometimes can be ugly. It can be gory. It can be long. And some of us, we fight. You know those people who you try and kill them? They're like, uh, what's that thing? Uh, that zombie movie, what is it? Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. You have to kill him 15 times. I don't know. What, with, I don't know which silver bullet. Put to death. Put to death. And once he's dead, put him in the grave. Put him in the grave. That grave is important for us. I used to be. I used to have. You're hanging on to some things. You're hanging on to some things. When we leave Golgotha, they carried Jesus and carried his body and put it in the tomb, inside a grave. You need to put some things in the grave. You need to put some things in that grave. That grave that God has prepared. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 and 14. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I haven't yet done it. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Those things that are in my future. I press toward the mark of the prize for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things that were behind me. I told the first service, there were things that I had to forget. I had to forget that I was number one. At one point, I was number one. I've been a number one gospel artist before. Number one. And the concert could not happen without you. And then the season changed. When the season changed, the concert started happening without me. Let me tell you, Pastor Liz, I printed cards. You know, I printed cards. So now I was in the U.S. I got somebody printed me cards. 500 cards that said... Uh, Pete Odera, blah, 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 whatever the card said. I gave out every single one of those cards. Not one of them returned to me with an invitation. 500 cards, no invitation. That is when you know your season has changed. I needed to put to death and bury because God was taking me somewhere else. And when he was taking me somewhere else, listen, I had to put that thing on the altar. I had to put my music gift on the altar. And God said, listen, I want you to put it on the altar for a season because I need you to lead a movement in this city. I need you to pastor a church. You put it on the altar and leave it right there. I don't, it's not that I don't want you to sing. Just keep singing. But you can't do the thing that you used to do. And I put it on the altar. I buried it. You're hanging on to some things. The Lord said to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Joshua chapter 1 verse 2. Put some things to death. Bury some things. Stop trying to revive the things that God has killed. There's some things that God has killed. Some, remember I said earlier that he's going to leave. This is that place. God is the one who has killed that relationship. I'm not sure who I'm talking to because I can't really see nicely. But there's at least two or three ladies in this place 
who I want to help you with something, and one gentleman. There's three ladies and at least one gentleman who that thing is being killed by God. Your relationship in a day, do God a me? God a me, why? We bless you, Lord, you are holy. You can't sing that song without tears in your eyes sometimes because he kills some things and he is still holy. He's still holy. Stop trying to revive some things that God killed. God killed them. You know how it is. I'm sorry. I don't mean any evil by this. I, I'm just saying. You know how the, some politicians, once you know their term was done, two terms are now done. It's 10 years later. 10 years later. But people still call them. <laughs> they have no office, no authority. Is that you? That your past is actually 10 years behind you. But you're still walking in this facade of make-believe. Can we move with the time? Can we move with the time? God wants to bring you into something new. But you are refusing because the past was so nice. I will sing the song that I sang to the first song. Didn't we almost have it all? The night we held on. And every day, you know how you used to have a song? It was our song. That was our song. There are some songs you're going to have to forget. As though I didn't do it myself. Go and look for my story on YouTube. <laughs> look for my engaged talk. You will see. I'm, not, I'm talking out of experience. You can almost have it all. <laughs> and hold on to the morning. He who has an ear. And only the people who knew Whitney Houston songs, uh, they are the ones I'm talking to. Okay. We're done with the hard part. Hallelujah. Because after the grave, there's only one way. There's only one way. 2,000 years ago on a day like today, something happened in the morning. The soldiers couldn't stop it. The devil couldn't stop it. The ground began to shake and the stone was rolled away because Sunday was coming. Let them bury you. Hello, am I talking to anybody? I'm almost done. Let them bury you. Let them bury you. Let them put you in the grave and bury you and say, that one is dead and gone. But Sunday is coming. I wish I had a church in this place. Where's Eugene when I need me? I need, I need you guys up here right away. I need you up here. Don't let me wait here. Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Let them throw soil on you. Let them throw soil on you. Watch our tupem tanga. Kabisa. Let them. Let them. This, let them say you are finished. Let them talk about you. Let them lie about you. Let them say whatever. Let them print. Let them post. Let the post have 500 likes and comments. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. Hallelujah. Let them dance on your grave, sister. Let them dance on your grave, brother. Let them say, All those ikas that they say. Let them say it concerning you. Let them say it because Sunday is coming. Nudge your neighbor for me and say, The pastor said, Sunday is coming. Let me preach to somebody here today who I came to encourage you. After all that, there is a glory. Can I talk to somebody here in Rock Tabernacle and let you know that there's a glory. There's a glory waiting for you. Can I talk to somebody here? There's a glory waiting for you. Because Sunday is coming. Somebody say Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. Listen, it can't be night forever. I know you prayed, you've cried and you prayed and you cried and you prayed and you asked how long. There was a, somebody who came to me after the service and said, for 15 years I've been waiting for the Lord to move. Well, honey, let me talk to you again today. Let me let you know. It may have been 15 years, but that day is ending today. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory is coming. Listen, if you've endured through it, if you let them talk about you, if you kept quiet through it all, 
God is faithful. The Bible says he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. There's somebody who's been seeking the Lord and waiting on God for a breakthrough for a long time. And every Sunday you've seen people come and receive their breakthrough. Let me talk to somebody who seems to think that God has forgotten them. Let me help you understand. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. Sunday. In fact, let me change my message a little bit. Sunday is here. Hallelujah. Say Sunday is here. Hey. Is there anybody who's been waiting on God in this place? Is there anybody who's been saying, God, why is it not my turn? You've been faithful. You've been waiting on God. You prayed. You've served. You've given. You've let others take your place. You've been quiet. And now God is saying to you, Sunday is here. Be happy for somebody. Be happy for somebody because their breakthrough just walked into the room. Listen, the resurrected glory is not like the former glory. That resurrected glory is not like the one that... No, 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 no. It's not like the glory of the living. That's why you can say, my future is brighter. My future is brighter. There's a glory. Look at, tap somebody and high five them. Tell them there's a glory waiting for me. There's a glory waiting for me. A far greater weight of glory. So that we do not lose heart. This is what the Bible says. Though our outer self is wasting away. Though it looks like to me filisika. Though it looks like to me didimika. Though it looks like to me malizika. And all those ikas. It looks like that. But let me help you with something. Our inner self is being renewed day by day. Because there's a glory. The Bible says for this light momentary affliction. Is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. You will walk into the room and they will feel something came in. I would much rather that than a hundred thousand likes on my Instagram. I would much rather have the weight of glory. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm waiting for. I want the kind of glory that is undeniable. I want the kind of glory that even sinners will say, the Lord has done great things for them. I want the kind of glory that people who knew me before say, what happened to you? I don't know if there's anybody in this room. Maybe I'm preaching too hard. I don't know if there's anybody in this room who knows that you know that you know that your season of glory is here. Shout hallelujah. It's a light momentary affliction. I can bear it. Look at your neighbor and say, I can take this. I can take this. I can take this. I can take this. Yeah. We need a new generation. Can I talk to this generation before I close? Can I talk to this generation? Listen. We have a generation now. Please sit for a second. Sit for a second. We have a generation now who when they receive even the slightest rebuke, they turn around and walk away and say that I've been wounded in the church hurt. There's been some church hurt in my life. And listen, I, you, what, do you want to see church hurt? Talk to me. They called me a devil worshiper. The president of this nation, Alitaja Jinalangu, in public. Oh, you guys weren't there. That's why you were saying you weren't there. Some of you were. You're talking about us bad everywhere. We did not leave the church. Even when the church said, you can't sing here. The church said, you can't sing here. Hatutoki. I'm not being thrown out. This is still my pastor. And the beauty of it, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, a month ago, um, my pastor, who was my pastor at that time, he, he was having his 75th birthday. They invited me. Guess who was leading worship that day? Can I talk to this generation? As an elder, let me help. get over yourself. (laughs) 
this yellow bellied light livered kind of thing is not going to bring the kind of revival that's going to transform nations yeah yeah we'll you know to our papasa you can go for counseling and therapy and everything and i i say let's do that let's do that but listen to me that kind of easily being offended is not the kind of thing that is going to bring the revival the kind of revival that will bring transformation for our kids' generation is not softy, mambi, namby, pamby kind of people who just say, no, the pastor didn't call me today or the pastor talked badly about me. The pastors talked badly about me. All of the, the pastors, pastors who I knew very well, talked badly about me. And then later, now, Okitoboa, let me tell you, the day I went on TBN, when TBN was still a place to go, when I got called on TBN, <laughs> when I got on to TBN, Listen, my phone started ringing. People who I didn't even know had my number started saying, well done. What was the next sentence that followed? Hook me up. Because some people, even after you get there, they still say, you're not worthy of them. If this guy can get there, where when sana, then it's very easy to get there. Because they didn't esteem that the gift that I carried was anything in the world. But who is God? Who is God? Who is God? Who am I talking to today? I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking about this thing that, listen, let them walk on you. Let them talk about you. Develop some muscle. Because let me help you talk. Let me talk to you about Reverend Wilson Mamboleo, who has been here and he's been at the uh, Rema Feast. That old man carried this nation when the nation was being born. He and Derek Prince were interceding that Kenya is birthed into a nation so that it becomes a springboard for revival and a lighthouse for many nations. You think he'd get away with you to call him names? What are you doing? People called him names. They told him, what are these tongues you're speaking? They carried nations. They carried nations in order to bring us to where we are and survived how many presidents? Five presidents. They are carrying this nation. There was a young man, I told the earlier service about this, a young man, his name was uh, in Wales. He spearheaded the Welsh revival. Evan Roberts, 26 years old. How old was he? 26. 26, a student at 26. He went to ask the leaders of the seminary that he was at and said, listen, I'd like to, I've been praying and I'd like to hold a meeting for the young people. And they gave him the small hall on the side. They gave him the small hall on the side. And he went into that hall and they began to pray. 14 people came to that meeting. Two weeks later, that thing had exploded. That 14 person meeting had exploded and become a revival that we're still talking about today. Go and read it, 1904, the Welsh Revival. Everybody within six months knew who Evan Roberts was. All over the world, they started looking for him. Why is that not you? He was not a pastor. Hello. He was not a pastor. He was an ordinary student. But Wales moved because he prayed. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I'm grateful for your breakthrough. Sorry, I know I'm sorry. I feel like I'm raining on your parade. I'm grateful for your breakthrough. I'm grateful for your breakthrough. In fact, I will celebrate with you. We prayed for a lady, a family last week in Mombasa who received a, a car. I'm happy because now they can, you know, maneuver, walk, go around the city, whatever. But is that all that we're praying for? I'm tired of church like that. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of that kind of church. I'm tired of coming to church and leaving the same and saying, oh, that was nice. Oh, well, that was nice. And it was. No, don't get me wrong. Please, don't get me wrong. Because we at Rock, we're very blessed. We have some great men and women. Pastor Thaddeus, oh my goodness. What level of teaching. Pastor Don, you know, at just down the road. Pastor Stan. These guys have weight. Pastor Doc, these guys have weight, weighty words. When Pastor Liz gets up here, he says, are we reading the same Bible? No, I have no problem with that. But listen, can we go a little deeper? Can we go a little deeper? I want more. Can I talk about two more revivals and then I'm out of here? Because this is the thing I want to switch our minds to. That is the real glory. That's what I'm looking for. God can give you a new car, but that will only make the person on the next road jealous of you. Let me tell you the thing that they'll never be jealous of is the power of God. When the power of God comes, even your Muslim neighbors will say, that person came into the estate and my, my son changed. Because of you. Can I talk to you about the Brownsville revival? 
The Brownsville Revival, read it. It happened in our lifetime. In 2005, uh, the Father's Day of 2005, Pastor John Kilpatrick was, in fact, he says it himself, he didn't want to go for that service. Excuse me? The pastor did not want to go for that service. He came to the service, and only because he had called uh, guest minister, evangelist Steve Hill, he had called Steve Hill to come and say, I wish this service could finish quickly so that we could go home and do Father's Day. They have, you know how it is in America, they have this, it's big, uh, Father's Day is a huge, not like here where Father's Day is, oh, <laughs> he who has an ear, I, I said he, but I actually meant the one with an S in front. Father's Day is a big deal. Uh, it's a big, so on that Father's Day, he didn't feel like going. And was, uh, in fact, now, the, the someone was finished, and Pastor Steve Hill, if you know him, had finished preaching. They were preaching. Yeah, well, well, well. And saying, this guy has just, got to finish, man. It's almost Father's Day. Guys need to go for dinner. Then he decided he's going to do an altar call. Ugh. The pastor's rolling his eyes, sitting in the back over there. And he's sitting in the back. The pastor, uh, um, evangelist Steve Hill makes an altar call. 1,500 people came for the altar call. And so now the pastor's saying, now we have to pray for all these people. So he's there sitting at the back saying, oh, this guy needs to be done. He needs to be done. Pastor Steve Hill is praying and praying. <laughs> and Steve Hill calls him and says, Pastor, I want you to come and, and, and help me pray for these people. So he came and put his hand on the back of the pastor because he was not in the mood. I'm sorry, that's just how we I like him because he's so honest. Sometimes we are not in the mood. To embe how at water. How? So he's holding, he's holding the pastor's back, the, the preacher's back like this. And then the power of God now, he, he started saying, whoa, the air condition must be on very high. Because he started feeling a cold breeze on his legs. The next thing he knew, he was on his back. And they didn't know what happened for the next four hours. The presence of God was so thick he couldn't move. They had to pick him up. Sister Belinda, let me tell you what happened in that. There were three, four-year-old children who walked into the room and were saying, Can you see them? Can you see them? And they asked him, See what? Angels. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing for our children's church kids to come into this place and say, oh, you have no idea what's going on. Dad, mom, the angels, can you see them? Can you see them? The presence of the Lord stuck there in that church for five years. They had church every day for five years. How many years? Some of us are looking at our watch. It's 115. It says 1 p.m. over this, 115. The visitation kept them there for five years. Sorry, I'm trying to release you. I'm going to release you in a minute or two. But I just need to create some hunger for you. There was some brethren who came from Texas and went to that Pensacola revival. They went back to Texas, Houston, Texas. The pastor of that church um, was called um, Richard Hurd. Richard Hurd. I'm not kidding. I was reading this yesterday. I couldn't believe it. I mean, some of this is unbelievable. And they started praying and asking God for the glory, for the cupboard of God to come in the same way. And they began to pray and wait on God. Give me something, give me something, give me something, give me something. They were waiting on God. They were waiting on God. You know what happened? The pastor came and he was leaning because he felt he was going to fall over. And the power of God was so present. The cupboard of God was present. And then they heard something like a clap of lightning. Like they had pow and there was a clap of lightning the pastor was thrown 10 feet behind fell on his back for an hour and a half the pulpit was split in two split I saw the picture I said I can't believe it split and pieces everywhere and the presence of God came into that church they said the number of people that were healed they can't even hundreds of thousands of people came to that church and as a result the glory rested your promotion is glorious but there's another level of glory that I want us to begin to hunger for I'm so grateful for these weddings that I'm seeing. You guys are so blessed. Congratulations in advance. Look at you. You know, you're going to get married. That's glorious, but there's another glory. There's a glory that's higher. The visitation of the Lord. 
and I want the glory of God in this place. We've tasted him and seen. We, we, we were over there. Many of us were over there at Rema Feast when, um, when, when there was a visitation. When people, we had to chase people on Saturday. We're tearing down their people still lying on their face because of the cabal. Because of the doxa, the presence of the Lord. This is what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for the day when we'll come to church and that's what's going to happen. Because that's the stuff that transforms. Quick testimony from one of those revivals. People were on the bus. They came to the city. I shared this in the, the earlier service. They came to the city where the revival was happening. It's like people come from Tanzania and jump on the, what do they call it? The bus, whatever that bus is. It, they told me Nyaugenya in the earlier early service. And you get to, to the bus station. They got to the bus station. They stepped out of the bus. All of them stepped out of the bus. And the presence of God hit them. Pop, they were all down on the floor. Some guy looked at them and said, oh my goodness. They called 911. 911. Listen, there's a murderer who has come and shot everybody at the bus stop. People are dead. And they said, where are you? We're at this and this place. The guys on 911 said, Ay, you must be new around here. The 911 guys were used to it. In fact, they were so used to these calls, they were told, the house is on fire. They come and they say, it, looks like, it looked like the house was on fire, but it was the presence of God. I'm not saying so that they can just be spectacular things. I'm saying this so that our kids can walk into a, a revival and understand the God that we serve is real. This Jesus who we cry tears for. And uh, please, I need you to do that song again. Please, uh, Medza. I loved it. You guys, please. Um, that, 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 that thing that he, his hands were pierced. This is why he died. So that the Muslims in this country can know and understand. You guys are not just noisemakers and lawbreakers. But you guys are people who understand and are worshipping a true and living God. The God who raised Jesus from the dead. The God who still raises people from the dead. Who opens the blind ears and the deaf ears. The God who turns people's destinies around. Who can turn criminals into preachers. The kind of God who can completely, completely transform nations. This is what we need. The president and the deputy president are fighting alcoholism in this country. All we need is a visitation from the Lord. And they said concerning this revival that the pubs and bars closed in Wales. They closed. The prisons closed. Cops were on holiday because they had to fire the police force. Because there was no more crime. You people here around the day are having issues. You can't go home. After 6.30 it becomes dangerous. In fact, somebody told me after seven, don't go behind here. I said, listen, we just need the presence of God to completely transform some thugs who are timing people there by the street. That the presence of God so convicts them that they come and say, we had cat. They bring their weapons and drop them in front. That's what a visitation will do. That's what the glory will do. Can we get that in our lives? This is what I'm longing for. This is why we sing. This is why I came all the way across two counties to come and bring this to you, to help you understand. Please understand, God wants more from us. That's the glory we're looking for. I want the glory. I don't know if you want the glory. I want the presence of the Lord. I want to reach a place where they buried me. But let it be that they buried me because they thought I was finished. But God wasn't done with me yet. Because there was still one more shout left in my life. There was still one more move of God left before. There was still one more thing that I needed to do at the office. There was still one more person who needed to get born again. There was still one more family member that I was holding on for. The glory of God will do this for you. Please stand. The God that we serve is not restricted by walls. Whatever walls that you have erected, God is not restricted by them. It is the resurrected Christ that brings transformation. That tomb today is empty. You can actually pay a visit to Jerusalem. And they can't show you the tomb because it's empty. My salvation is secure. I don't know where you are on this journey. I don't know where you are on this journey. But this God is willing and able to rescue you. Go ahead, worship. I just need you to.
can we just give him a few minutes? anything I'm just gonna give a few more minutes some of you are in this room I want you to make a commitment today I want you to make a commitment say Lord I came for an Easter service but I want to make a commitment I want to make a commitment to you Lord I give you permission to take me through my garden I give you permission to take me to the governor I give you permission to take me to my Golgotha because there's things in my life that I still need to kill there's somebody in here that you still need to kill something in your life. This is your moment. I need you to make a commitment today and say, God, I will kill it. I'll kill it. I'll delete the number. I'll delete the number. I won't go there no more. I won't do it again. Somebody here is making a deal with God. I promise you this is your moment. Don't wait for the music. Listen, I love you. that person is you and you know you need to do business with God, I want you to raise your hand today. If that's you, you need to do business with God, just raise your hand. Thank you. I see you. I see you. I see you. It's not about the people in them. This is you. This is you. Say, I need to do business with God. I want something different for a change. I want something different for a change. I don't want the ordinary. I want the extraordinary. I want the extraordinary. I want the extraordinary. I want you to use me like you used Steve Hill. I want you to use me like you used Evan Roberts. I want you to use me like you used Wilson Mamboleo. I want you to use me, oh God. If that's you, raise your hand up high. I want to pray with you today. It takes one. You don't even have to be a pastor. Father, see the hands that are raised. More importantly, see the hearts that are inclined to you. Father, I pray for every person in this room who's making a commitment today, who says they want to be used by you, who says they want the transformational power of the Holy Spirit. Father, they want the glory of God more than they want anything else. If that's you and you want the glory of God, I want you to raise up a cry to God. Say, God, I want your glory. Cry out to God right now. Say, God, I want the glory more than I want anything else. Say, God, listen, it's just a few more minutes. Ah, he might then come and then we're stuck here for five days. Ah, King of Glory, I want you to come. I want you to come and transform my life. I give you permission today. Just for a few minutes, guys. Just for a few minutes. Just say, Lord, let this Easter be a different one. I want transformation. I will not complain anymore. 
I want transformation. I refuse to complain anymore. I choose to be a different vessel. I choose to be a different vessel. I choose to put to death the things that need to die. I choose. I choose. I choose. I choose to bury what I need to bury. Lord, I'm asking that you will move in this place once more in the mighty name of Jesus that Lord you take the substrate of what your people are offering and give them a visitation I pray that in the night season you will visit us and not allow us Lord God to sleep cause us Lord God to be raised and awakened Lord God to the things of God I'm praying that King of Glory you cause our hearts to be turned remove the taste of the things in the world from our mouths oh God Remove that taste from our mouths, oh God. Remove that taste from our mouths, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want a change, oh God. I want a change. If that's you and that's the commitment that you made, say Jesus. Say it loud. Say Jesus. I commit today. I commit to your glory. I commit to your glory. I want your glory. Send your glory. Hallelujah. I love you. to lift your hands and just bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Please take your seats. We'll be closing in a few minutes. Did you appreciate the ministry of Dr. Pete? Please help me appreciate God's servant. I think you can appreciate God for his servant more than that. Amen. 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 All right, I want us to get ready to give our offering and listen to this announcement. I will, I will take the, please listen as you get ready to, to give. Uh, there is a Sensodyne booth, okay? Sensodyne activation outside there and it's for free. You need to check your teeth, please go there and you enjoy the service for free. There is a tax lecture, taxation lecture. Uh, that will be happening on the 6th of April. That's this Saturday uh, at Ruach East. Please listen. This was not in the announcement. That's why I'm emphasizing it. At Ruach East, a taxation lecture that has to do with business. So if you know you need to be a part of that, you need it for your business so that you know uh, what is happening and that uh, aspect, please. Uh, make yourself available on Saturday, this Saturday at Ruach East on Mombasa Road from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. The charges is 1,000 um, and we'll be having the managing part now. It's, it's, it's been done with FCPA Philip Muema. He's the managing partner at the scene in Kenya. Please, immediately after the service, you need this information. We'll have it there. Somebody from the decks, please come and take this information from me because I know I gave it to uh, the guys handling the announcement, but they couldn't put it on the screen so that you know how to, where to pay the money to. Okay? Alright. Um, now listen. Our anniversary is being postponed. Okay? Uh, it was announced it's going to be on the 7th but it's been postponed and it's going to happen now on the 26th of May on the 26th of May 
you can, if you need an envelope, please lift your hands. The host will give you an envelope so that we do that as I announce. Uh, 26th of May, which is the last Sunday of May, we'll be having our anniversary as a church. So the, the, we have enough time to prepare for that. And we'll be starting our joint services running from May, June, July, August, September, I think, for, for that period. We used to have that last year, so we're going to be starting it beginning on the 26th of May when we host our anniversary. It's going to be also an evening joint service. Um, there were people who were baptized today. This morning, during the first service, some people were baptized. Please, if you're among them, please stand up. Stand up. If you were baptized today, stand up. Come on, celebrate them. Celebrate them, celebrate them, celebrate them. All right. Um, I passed there in the morning before I came to church. It's a wonderful experience. Can we just pray for them for uh, 30 seconds? They've made a commitment and they've announced it that God will keep them. I was told it was wonderful. People were speaking in tongues this morning. So we pray that God will keep you. Oh, come on. I said, we pray God will keep you. This decision you made, you know, I told them when I first got baptized, uh, Dr. Pete, I had no idea what it meant. So the life I live after baptism was not worthy of the life I should be living. And I know the pastor who baptized me there said when he got baptized the first time, he stole a Bible from church. That will not be your portion. Yeah. The grace to live for Jesus is released upon you. We bless them in Jesus' name. Please celebrate them one more time. Please take your seats. Your certificates will be ready. I know next week we have baby dedication, huh? All right. Awesome. Now, let me talk about Kingdom Commonwealth. How many of you attended the meeting on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? How was it? Huh? I can't even hear. How was it? Yeah. Where I come from, we say it was Fantama Glorious. Yes. All right. So, on behalf of Reverend, we want to say thank you to everyone who came on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now, the Bible said the husbandman is first partaker. So, this is for us first before it goes outside. All right. So, everyone, thank you for coming. And for those who didn't make it, there is an opening. All right. So now we understand there are very many of you who still who are still on the waiting list. We currently have 1,200 slots available. So please register early. The next meetings will be held this Thursday, 4th of April, and Friday. This Thursday and Friday from 12 noon or 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Arsat, at the waterfront in Karen. Okay, for these first trainings, we would prefer that you attend physically. We are giving first priority to our Ruach assemblies. Then we will move to other places and counties later on. Please feel free to invite your family and friends. And please note this. This is very important. When signing up, please fill in all the required details correctly. Our registration team had a very challenging time sorting out the registration list because some people wrote only one name others even gave a wrong phone number some didn't receive emails because they wrote the wrong email address that bounced back others never responded to our calls despite our attempts to reach them even via text messages some did not even try to register despite being given guidelines instead they kept calling different pastors they are ninth to assist them we beg you, please follow instructions and key in all the details correctly. All right? Are there people who will make time on Thursday and Friday? You will make time to be there. Is there anybody like that? And me, I'm already an ambassador of that. So, you know, when you hear good news, you spread it. All right? So, invite your family, invite your friends. And here are the steps 
We want you to follow. Take out your phone immediately after the service. The, the QR code will be on the screen. And you can even, there, are, there will be somebody behind where you can scan it. All right? The QR code, uh, take out your phone, scan the QR code dis, to display the register. Fill all the details required therein. And if you can't scan, follow the registration link provided. Please select Thursday, April or Friday, 5th April for physical attendance. Remember, Kingdom Commonwealth. Is that okay? I said, is that okay? Very important. Uh, Reverend said, I should tell you that. Very important. So, he's in Botswana blessing people, but I know next week he will be here physically. Amen? Do you love your reverend? Uh, do you love him? All right, so let's spread the word. Spread the word. It's an amazing thing. I can't, I can't emphasize it enough. Imagine if we had started this 20 years ago or 10 years ago. we will be so far. But it's never too late to do the right thing. Amen. Are you ready to give? Are you ready to give? All right. So as the worship team sing, if you are giving your stand, please stand up. Father, we thank you for everyone giving their tithe this morning. We speak the blessing of God over you. We ask that from where you've brought out the tithe, may God multiply it a hundredfold. In Jesus' name. Every giving, every seed, every sacrifice is blessed. Jesus, you sacrificed for us. This morning we come with our seed to sacrifice. To say thank you for all you did for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's give it the spirit of excellence as the host save us. All right. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, Every 4 a.m. in the morning, we are praying online. Tomorrow is the 1st of April. Is it? Yeah. Don't wait for April full. Let's, let's be online in the morning as we pray. All right? Then we are still activating. I think I will, I will give more direction on that 
on a 24-hour prayer chain. We want you to be a part of it. This year, one of the instructions is that we will pray. You heard, you heard Dr. Pete saying it. We pray till we finish. So this year we are praying. We are praying. This house will be called what? This house will be called what? Alright, so please remember that 4 a.m. every morning, we normally start our month uh, with prayer. But we said after the fasting, we are going for three months. I think this April will be the third month, is it? Yeah. So please join us for prayers every morning 4 a.m. as we pray. And remember RSP on Wednesday. I think this Wednesday will be at All Saints. We will be at All Saints on Wednesday, RSP 5 p.m. in the evening. Please come if you're done. Just come as the, as the pastors pray over you. Uh, please don't forget that RSP. It's a time of repair. Then Reverend said something, and I want to say it here. I remember him. We were seated with the team, and he said Wednesday should be a day of fasting. Is that okay? So I want to declare that every Wednesday, 2024, we'll be fasting as a church. Hey, hey, see the quietness. Can we, can, we, can we adopt that as a lifestyle? Now, generally, every member of uh, our tabernacle, Ruach Tabernacle, Wednesday is our fasting. It's not this fasting where you miss sugar and tea. You are free to drink all the water in the world. From morning to evening. Let's take that time to pray. Fast and pray. As a, as a church together. Is that okay? Is that okay? Somebody say, I love that announcement. <laughs> Please rise up as we close. I want us to appreciate Pastor Mule. Please, Pastor Mule. Reverend Bev, Pastor Lees, and some of our brothers, I can't call out their names, who joined us this morning to make sure the people are being baptized. Please help me appreciate them again. Yeah. In the morning, it was very cold, and they entered into that water. Amen. Thank you very much. We appreciate all our pastors. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Please, let's take a seat. Lift your hands and just thank God for a new week. We hear the sound of victory this week. Jesus was victorious over death. This week, you are victorious. Uh -uh, I, can't, I don't like your amen. I said this week, you are victorious. Somebody has been chasing after something. This week, receive victory in that area. Somebody has been struggling. This week, receive victory in that area. Victory over sickness. Victory over lack. Victory over abuse. Victory over oppression. Because Jesus won the victory. And we are seated with him. We also have the victory. In the name of Jesus. Your week is blessed. Whatever you put your hands to do is blessed. Prosper wherever you turn this week. And come back with a testimony. In Jesus mighty name. God bless you. Have a wonderful service. person who fellowship us, us for the first time please there's somebody holding a placard there we want to get to know you those of you need to do scan the, the, the code the QR code is on the screen you can come and scan it God bless you I hear the sound